Now I'm ready to give a short introduction to the robot operator system. And this presentation is heavily inspired by a similar presentation that uh, Martin Peter Christensen gave uh, last year that I have uh, had the option of, of borrowing the slides from. Thank you for that. So, first of all, when uh, a lot of people try to develop software for robots, um, they actually face different kinds of, uh, of challenges. And the, the basic one is that everyone wants to start from scratch, that is uh, giving a, a C compiler and then make everything work from, from there or something similar. <clears throat> and there is just a limitation on how, for, how far individuals can, can take a, a single project when they start from scratch. If we start developing different kinds of uh, modules that can be reused, then um, it gets much simpler to, to actually collaborate and, and build uh, interesting things on, on top of that. Um, and the basic issue on how robotic development has uh, been, been running uh, earlier is, uh, is demonstrating in the circle over here, where we have um, someone publishes a paper about a, a robot and some software they have made for that robot. Some others find this of interest and would like to uh, redo some of the experiments or maybe even extend it. But it's hard to figure out how the software should be used, even if they have access to the software. And it's not really defined how to, to use the software and many other things. So they try to do it again and try to maybe build it from, from scratch um, to make it easier. And a lot of time goes and at some point uh, time runs out and you commit a new paper. And now the, the circle repeats because there is not this uh, nice uh, framework to actually uh, reuse um, software within. And Ross actually tries to solve this uh, problematic approach to, to this. <coughs> but how does it uh, do that? While when uh, the robot operating system is a flexible tool work for writing robot software. And it's a collection of different elements, tool libraries and conventions that makes it simpler for a robot uh, software developer to go through all these uh, steps that is uh, required. And you can say that the primary goal of ROS is to support code reuse in robotics research and development. And the idea, it's not only so you're able to, to take a certain piece of code and then reuse it uh, in a new project, but to build it in a coherent way so it's easy to make uh, code elements fit into each other. And there, yeah, let's talk a bit about the, the history of, of ROS because it has uh, a few years uh, behind it uh, right now. The project started back in 2007 and at uh, Stanford, the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. And then it has been overtaken by uh, the Open Source Robotics Foundation uh, in 2013. And for many cases, it's more or less the de facto standard for robot programming. And we have uh, numerous uh, cases on of where it has been, been used. Um, a few examples here from Denmark is a mobile industrial robot uh, seen down here, which is a commercial success in, in the part of uh, Odense, bought by a, a huge uh, a company behind mobile industrial robots, was bought by a huge uh, uh, American uh, company. <coughs> we have the robotics a field robot. Uh, no. Um, we have a field robot uh, here, the Roboti, which has been developed as a joint effort by the University of Southern Denmark and uh, several different uh, companies. Now it's belonging to a company named uh, Aquantelli, who is able to, to drive 
uh, autonomously in uh, agricultural fields and conduct different um, work tasks in the field and it's based on ROS uh, entirely. We have the Intelligent One which is a, a football field uh, drawing robot. Also it's actually a quite simple robot with a differential drive and a RTK GPS antenna on top of it and it's controlled through ROS and is able to uh, go out and and put uh, white lines on, on uh, football fields or soccer fields in a very precise way. And finally, you can also use ROS if you want to control a drone or capture data or analyze data uh, during flight. So it can actually be used for, for quite many different things. Let's take a look and, at uh, how which uh, elements uh, ROS consists of. You can imagine ROS being a, a large um, environment um, where you have access to a lot of tools and other things. And, and these can be divided into what is known as plumbing, uh, tools, capabilities, and, and the ecosystem. And let's zoom a bit more into to that to get to know what the these elements actually cover. And uh, ROS does not work if you take one of these elements uh, out, or at least the, the big benefit from ROS uh, leaves us um, if one of these elements is, is taken out. The plumbing is the low level stuff. That is how to manage different processes. You can have uh, multiple things uh, going on while ro running a, a single robot. Um, and that covers process management and communication uh, between um, the, the running processes and also uh, low level device drivers for communicating with a web camera or an actuator or whatever you, you need to interface with. Then there is a set of tools that allows you to do simulations and visualizations and provide a, a useful uh, GUI for whatever you you want to to inf interface the, the robot with and there are some options for data logging um, and based on these two you can actually go quite far but there is already a, a host of um, well-defined uh, packages that can help you do different things um, just by using uh, existing plumbing and these uh, pack packages for instance, there are packages to control a robot so it moves in a certain pattern. There are nodes that can plan robotic motions uh, that can help on, on analyzing and perception of, of data to map regions based on sen sensor input and how to control manipulation of, of uh, objects. And to make it easy to use for new users and existing users that can can use it uh, to, to the full extent. Um, the ecosystem around all the built-in tools inside ROS is also quite important and that covers package organizations, that is how to install packages and to distribute them out to, to users. The documentation and the tutorials, that is uh, tools for, for getting people started uh, using the, the system. In Rust, you are able to program in, in different uh, languages. Um, there are some languages are fully supported and some it's possible to, to use to, to a lesser extent. In this course, we will mostly rely on uh, Python, which the current Rust version uses Python 2.7. Um, there is a new Rust 2 underway that relies on Python 3, but there are some limitations uh, in, in using that uh, right now that has hindered me from from using it in this course so let's dive into the robot operating system and uh, see if we can uh, build a, a package and, and make uh, stuff work inside that um, us uh, uses the cat can build system which is one way of, of specifying which packages depend on others and in which order should I compile stuff and all of that things. 
it's a command line tool named Catkin. Um, and we use that version that uh, is issued using a uh, Catkin build. An earlier version relied on Catkin make, but that's not interesting for, for now. When you have created a Catkin workspace or Rust workspace, uh, you will have a number of uh, subdirectories uh, in that workspace. The workspace is just a directory on your computer. And inside that, there should be a SRC folder or source space where your actually source code should be contained. And there are two other directories, the build and the develop uh, spaces or directories, which contain information that's, that Rust has built based on the information in the source directory. And um, please don't touch the build or develop. Uh, directories unless you really know whatever is in there. I don't dare touch them myself. And using or under normal circumstances you should be able to do all your work in the source folder and if everything just messes up you can start from uh, a fresh uh, plate using the cat can clean uh, command here. So now it's time to look into the a small uh, mini exercise here. I assume it will take you approximately 10 minutes to, to go through this, um, but uh, give it a shot. It's the idea is to um, create your own uh, work, Rust workspace and then uh, get some data down uh, through this uh, link and finally make that. Uh, build it and to make it run. Yeah, good luck with, with that. <laughs> 